Hi everyone, I'm James and welcome back to Get Good at Golf. In today's video, we're going to talk you through a golf club that so many people don't buy and so many golfers should buy. Chris, how are you? Very good, yourself? I'm wonderful, thank you, Chris. So, this is a club which often isn't described as sexy. No, definitely not. But can save you numerous shots. So, Chris, just to explain, especially this time of year where it's wintry, there's a low sun, very, very wet and everything's a little bit boggy. Oh, who's that? I don't know, but we need to go. <laughs> Thanks, take care, bye. Right, before we really interrupted Chris, we thought we'd leave the humour in because that's what we do on this channel. Talk us through this wedge because at this time of year, like I've said, it's cold, it's wet, it's damp. Why do people not spend the money, Chris, on clubs like this that can help them? Yeah, so you've got to think, guys, what, what kind of conditions you are playing. So what kind of golf course do you play? Because getting the correct wedges realistically over the season is going to help you lower your scores, get better contact, be a more consistent short game player, and you're going to get good at golf. But here we've got a 56 degree with 14 degrees of bounce. And again, we're talking bounce angle today. And we'll see if I set that club up straight. We can see that's that angle here. So again, that's going to work again in the thicker rough, which we're going to play some different shots shortly. In the thicker rough, we're going to be able to glide through that better. The bounce is going to help us get a strike. Whereas if you're potentially playing on links and a nice tight fringe here, it's going to be much harder. James has got a different 56 degree there with a different amount of bounds. So think about your conditions. Some clubs are going to help you more than not. So here it would be much harder for me to get a strike. If I open that up, we're going to see that the leading edge comes off the ground. So we're going to see that that's closer to the middle of the golf ball. So there's a big angle. You'll see there's a big gap there and it's off the ground. So if I make a normal swing there, I'm more than likely going to top it, thin it, not hit a great shot. So if I've got too much bounce and I'm playing Lynx Golf, then potentially we would have to have this nice and square and it's going to make it easier. We're not going to be using the bounce as much. I'd have to have a little bit of forward shaft lead and that would allow me then to get a a nice crisp strike but obviously that is then adjusting your setup having to change things having to manipulate it so getting the correct wedge for your golf course for your conditions is massive to you saving shots and you see for me guys i often think that this is something that people just don't think about they'll think about what brand name wedge they're going to get people are thinking am i going to get ping i'm going to get Voki, i'm going to get some tailor-made wedges when realistically speaking we're thinking about what bounce am i going to get what loft am i going to get for my gap in and this is all stuff which so many amateur golfers just don't think about about enough when spending the money. Wedges aren't cheap anymore. Full nope. set of oak is what, 500 pound probably, maybe more? Maybe more, yeah. But you don't go and get the right bounce either for the time of year or for the golf course you play. So interesting that, Chris, you mentioned about if you have too much bounce, which I often think that that is the lesser of the two evils, I think, because if you don't have enough bounce and you don't have the perfect technique, often you find yourself maybe not that extreme, but that is what you can guys it can dig into the ground and that's where you can really start to get your knee shakers with yeah. your short game whereas Chris if I had your more bounce wedge there I can actually see the leading edge almost sat there just above the turf line if I try and duff that yes you can hear that I still caught it a little bit heavy there was still ground interaction but it's actually glided underneath glided do you get glided, it? Glided. glided it's actually glided 4.0 underneath that ball. Still got airborne and still got moving towards the flag. Guys, now we're going to jump in a few different locations. We're going to see just how much getting more bounce on your wedge can help you. And also, Chris, what about those mega forgiving wedges, the high toes, the Bigfoot wedge, all those wedges with massive amounts of bounce, not for everyone, but could save some people loads of shots. Yes, they certainly could. A lot of different options now, guys, so you need to make sure you do go for a wedge fitting. Think about that. You just you would get fitted for a driver. You wouldn't more than likely pick one off the shelf. Exactly the same for your wedges. You need to get down here. You need to think about what course conditions you've got and set it up for you. You're spending a lot of money, potentially, so we need to get them right. So, Chris, you've been lucky enough to spend a lot of time on tour with some of the best golfers in the world discussing short game, all things short game, really. Yep. Um, a big misconception is the better player you are, the less bounce you have. Yeah, correct. I mean, a lot of people think, well, the better I get, I don't need any bounce because I'm going to strike it perfect every time because I've practiced so much. But it's incorrect. You'll see a lot of tour players, what they'll do is they'll 
I know everyone can't do this, but they'll carry two different wedges. So depending on what kind of conditions, depending on what golf course they're at, they might have something with a lot of bouncing, then they might have something with less. When they go to Lynx Golf, they change. When they play maybe at Valderrama, where the rough's always been known to be very thick, they get something with a lot of bounce. So in this kind of situation, if we have little amount of bounce, Often that's going to activate the leading edge a lot more and potentially we could snag the club, it turns over and how many times have you hit shots out of the rough where we've had a big swing but it's snagged there, it's come out left and it's ran through or it's not even got to the green but it's nowhere towards the target we're trying to achieve. Whereas here, what we're going to do, obviously with the 14 degrees of bounce, it's going to glide through that more. We can open it up, use the bounce which is then going to split the grass really and we're going to be able to get a contact here if i make the same kind of swing we can see caught it a little bit heavy but it's done the work and it's gone towards Still the target there, yeah all i needed to do there was put a little bit more of a swing on that but you can see it cut through that nice and easy a little bit more swing oh delightful you see there a very favorable bounce <laughs> but we can get straight through the grass. It's going to be very difficult with that 56 with less bounce to get through there. You'd have to play probably more speed and we know with more speed there's potentially more that can go wrong. If it snags then it could shoot across and it's going to cost you shots. You could put a great swing on it and it go nowhere near where you want to be. So Chris, what we're going to do, we're going to have a little test now. There should be two balls left here. I'll throw another one down for you try and get similar lies and we're going to play one high bounce one low bounce and we're going to see we're both going to do this and see which wedge works best for us out of different situations now the big thing for me here is people are happy to go and spend a lot of money on a driver a lot of money on a putter a lot of money on irons a lot of money on everything but they won't buy maybe a cheaper budget wedge with more bounce on for that one two three four times a year maybe you need it if the weather's not so favorable yeah exactly and you've got to have options so you want when you get in a setup and if you do go for a fitting I would hope that they're going to fit you with something so you've got some versatility you might have a 56 with more bounce on it and then you might have a 60 degree with less bounce on it so it can be used in different situations if we go high bounce with everything you then go away you go on a nice golfing trip you go and play some links golf you play off some tight fairways you're not going to be able to chip it's then going to give you low confidence we then know the dreaded why would not say it the y word the y word or the d word or the s word there's lots of words i was thinking yips you know you yeah. lose your confidence you get to the yips and then it's the wedges that have really got you into that so so i'm going to go the 10 degrees bounce first i'm going to open it up i'm going to try and go again for this first flag that's a great shot so it's a good shot it has got through we've collected a nice amount of grass on the club face so it's done its job but you see there because it's obviously got a sharper leading edge that's cut through and it's taken a lot but let's switch over now so a good shot again came out fiery because i have to give it that little bit more because i know it's got less bounce it's then come out hotter than i wanted it to so here with the 56 the ping again comes out much slower and a good shot from that kind of lie. So for me, straight away, nice and easy to see which it is. Again, we're not hoping that you're in this kind of lie, but we know we find this kind of lie probably more than we should. So guys, I'm gonna do the same thing now. And often when you do talk bounds, people talk grind as well. Titleists are famous for this. Sometimes they kind of known to have too many bounces, too many grinds, too many options. So I used to see a lot of people with kind of lots of high bounce K grind and lots of people the other way with kind of S grind in their wedges. I actually prefer the kind of M grind. I've got that in my 60 degree. That's more middle of the road. You get plenty of bounce, but you can still square it up and still use it. Versatility is the key word I often find here. Right, a little bit buried. We've got 10 degrees of bounce here. That came out okay again, Chris. I've got a very similar thing to you here with lots of grass on there because there's not a lot of bounce it is digging that's where you may find you do come a little bit unstuck whereas with a little bit more this lie is actually a little bit worse let's see if we can get out there that was so easy to get out and i think the bounce there has really helped me i think actually my first one was a little bit closer but the second one was lying a little bit worse it was actually lying quite a lot worse but this thing here has really, really, really helped me. Guys, let's show you another lie where having the right amount of bounce can help you. And the right amount of bounce isn't always a lot of bounce, but this time of year, it often is. So guys, one thing that I often find as well, I've spent so long in my life teaching golf and then picking golf balls up, and I always use a bounce with lots of wedge on, just 
bounce with lots of wedge on. I always, we're going to keep that in. I always use a wedge with lots of bounce on to pick the balls up because say if I want to just kind of flick one in the air there, you'll see. <laughs> you'll see just how easy that is because I'm not thinking about technique. I'm going to nonchalantly just walk over there and slam the bounce into the back of the ball. If you struggle with chipping, that's something that can really, really help you. No, that was like Dimitar Berbatov, wasn't it? Right, let's jump in the bunker. Let's see what the, how the wedge can help you in there. I can't believe I'm... How good is that? <laughs> is it a bunker or is it a pond? So, guys, I mentioned it was winter. And often you find bunkers like this, Chris. So half the bunker is a little bit damp. Obviously, you would get a drop from that, but you'd have to remain in the bunker. A little bit damp. It's a foot deep. It, it is... Uh... It's very wet. Yeah, so we're going to get compact bunkers. It's one thing that people have asked about on the channel is compact bunkers. But here we've got compact sand because it's been raining, but there's plenty of sand in here. So instantly people think when it's co uh, when it's compact, sorry, they'll go, right, I need little bounce. I don't need much bounce because it's compact. It's rained. It's, all the sand's down. Well, no, if you've got a lot of sand under there, we still need a lot of bounce because we're still going to take a lot of sand. We're going to take a divot. But the bounce is going to help us glide through there and pop it out as opposed to again with less bounce it could dig the divot becomes bigger and then distance control is much harder to judge so i'm going to go in first of all with the ping glide 4.0 we know this is the biggest bounce but again if i just use that bounce to my advantage you can see straight away That's there a lovely shot by the way a nice little oval divot came out nice and high and was nice and controlled. So you see, I've not took much sand there. It was nice and easy. I've used the bounce because a lot of people stop using the bounce. They start to dig into bunkers. They get ahead of it. There, like James did on that unfortunate chipping, he can really <laughs> feel like he's throwing it down. He's throwing the bounce down and he's using that. So again, I'll try that again here with the Voki. Not bad. Not Good bad. Shot. But we can see double the size of the divot and we can all see it's, it's instantly gone deeper. Yes, that could be motion, but that's what that kind of wedge is going to encourage. And depending on how much you're able to practice, it's going to be very hard to judge your distance control. I'll give these a clean, Chris, in the ideal for that. Mm. So guys, me and Chris have just been discussing off camera that it's such a shame this video probably won't get the amount of views that an adjustable driver video gets, how tit it longer video gets, but it could definitely save you more shots. So I'm actually going to play two square face shots here and show you the difference. A lot of people think, oh yeah, I have to open the face here to get it out. We've got 56 degrees on this wedge. That's more than enough to get it out here. But if I do go square faced, you'll see there that the club has dug in quite a lot and there's no bounce to help rescue that ball out there. If I go square faced with more bounce, well, I'll, I'll tell you what happens, but I'll, I'll show you what happens instead. You'll see straight away, I've got a lot more glide underneath there. The balls run up towards the, it nearly went in as well, Chris, that one. The balls run up close to the flag, all because I've got the right amount of bounce on this wedge. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video does help you get good at golf and lower your scores. Think about it, guys. Are you using the right art? <laughs> Are you using the right artillery to help you get good at golf? See you tomorrow. Bye.